Are you ready to grow microgreens at home? I'm going to show you how easy it is. For an example, I'm going to use my home microgreens kit. But you can just copy the pieces and parts and the equipment in the kit and grow your own microgreens with the stuff that you have at home. So what does the kit include? It includes two trays. All right. The two trays are a watering tray. This tray has no holes whatsoever in the bottom or the top. It obviously is used to put water in. The second one is the planting tray. This has holes in the bottom. Also has soil and a cover. Also comes with a spare cover. It comes with a watering bottle. You're going to need a spray bottle. You're going to need some sort of shaker bottle. This is a four ounce spice bottle. I found that three sixteenths inch holes on the top work the best. And of course, you're going to need microgreen seeds. That's all you really need besides light and water to grow microgreens. Now let's get to the seeds first. With the home microgreens kit, whatever variety you buy, the seeds, the seed packet that you buy has the right amount of seeds for the home microgreens tray. If you're growing in your own tray at home, I have an article on my website, homemicrogreens.com, that will actually do the conversion for you on how many grams of, mic of each type of microgreen you need to grow in that size tray that you have. The home microgreen kit really makes it easier. Sure, you can use any recycled material you want, but then you have to find the soil, you have to find a watering container that it fits into, their odd sizes. Yes, the website will convert how many ounces, or sorry, how many grams of seed you'll need, but with the kit, you can just buy the right amount of soil. You can reorder the re amount of soil when you order your next seed packet. The skin, the seed packets come, whatever variety, the amount of grams that you need for this area of tray. It's just one shop stopping, shopping. You don't have to worry about doing any of the conversions. Um, the whole microgreen kit is the way to go in my opinion. But you can just follow along if you have your own containers. Just, you know, you'll see how simple it is in the, in the following video. Here's your home microgreens trays. You can see they come, soil's already in the container, rubber band holding it together. You just take the rubber band off, set the extra top to the side. And there's two trays here, but before we take the trays apart, we wanna make sure that the soil inside the tray is level. So I just shake it a little bit, level it out, then gently take the bottom tray off which is your watering tray. You see it has no holes in it. There may be a little soil in there, but we'll take care of that later. And this is your planting tray, the one with the soil in it. You can see that it does have holes in the bottom. So what you do is take the clear top off, gently, so it doesn't spill all over. Use your hand and level the soil out. Then you take your top, the very top of the top, the smooth side, and center it in your tray, just like that, and gently press down. You don't want to put a whole lot of force onto it, but just enough to firm up the surface of the soil. Pull the top off, and you have a fairly flat surface. If you see big pieces of wood product, or the white perlite, just pick those off. They'll take up room for your seeds. Just if they're large, like quarter inch or so. You can also take the soil from inside the planting tray or the watering tray that's spilled during transport into it. And if it's a little uneven after you pick that stuff off, just put the top back on and level it out. And now your planting surface is ready for step two. In step two, we're going to wet the surface of the soil. I don't like to pre-moisten all the soil in the planting container for the reason that moisture will work its way up. We're going to cover these eventually, so we don't need a ton of moisture in this seeding tray to work its way up through. But we do want to wet the surface, and we're going to wet the seeds afterwards, and I found that that's enough, and it does cut down on fungal diseases. So to wet this, your level surface, your flat surface that we did in step one, you just take a watering bottle, set your bottle to spray, and at first just slowly mist the top 
of the soil surface. If we go too hard at first, it has a tendency to blow the soil right out of the container. But once it's wet, you want to soak it pretty well. I generally do this two or three, even sometimes four times. So we wet the surface until the water pretty much ponds onto it. And you're going to see that that water that's sitting on the surface will slowly sink in. So that's the first wetting. Now that the water is, you can see it's still moist, but the water, there's no water sitting on top of the soil, we do it again. Again, you can do a pretty good jet of water on this or a mist of water on this tray. And you want the surface to be all wet. Basically water, very lightly ponded on top. We'll let that soak in a little bit too. It may take a couple minutes or so. And then we're gonna wet it a third time. At this point, you might find a couple other pieces of wood product or perlite that are pretty big. This one right here is fairly large. It takes up some room. So I'm just gonna gently pick it off, put it over there, and then just repair the divot with my fingertip. As you touch it, you can feel that it's very moist on top. That's just what we want. There's pieces of cocoa fiber like that right there. Just pull it off, repair the divot. And that's the end of step two. We now have a planning surface. Okay, for step three, we can take our planning tray and just set it aside for a minute. And we're gonna take our shaker bottle, open it up. If it's brand new, you might have this piece of styrofoam inside, just pull that off, set it aside. And you'll see that the shaker bottle has several 3 16 inch holes into it. Now we want to put our seed into the shaker bottle. So we'll just remove the top, take our seed packet. I'm planting broccoli at the moment, 3.3 grams of broccoli seeds. Um, if you're buying a whole microgreens tray, it comes in these little packets. The packets are perfectly, have the perfect seed density for the whole microgreens tray. So to take the seed, we just open up the Ziploc bag, stick inside the jar and pour the seed in. Make sure you get them all out. Pro tip, always put the top back on and keep it closed because once in a while you'll knock it over or something like that and then you have seed all over. So that's the third step, putting the seed into our shaker bottle. Okay, for step four we're gonna Take these seeds and sow them on our tray. So we're gonna take our planting tray, put it back here. You can take a look at it. It feels moist, but it doesn't really hurt to make sure you just wet it a little bit before you put the seeds onto it. Let's the seeds stick a little bit more. So to sow the seeds, you just take our jar. I like these larger jars because they can fit in your hand and they're easier to control because we're just gonna take this bottle and shake the seeds onto the planting top. There are smaller bottles, but then we're sort of like this trying to put them on. I feel like it's just easier if it's sitting in our hand all the way in the palm of our hand. All right, so again, these are broccoli seeds and we're just gonna plant them on the tray. To plant them, let me move this a little bit closer so I can get my hand in there. Just open the top up. And I like to plant in a circle. So I like to go around the outside of the container, then I work my way in. So you just sort of start shaking them and tilt the jar so the seeds start falling out. Just go in little circles until you've gone around the tray once. Now I just take a look at the tray. Here's the, hope you can see the seeds on there. Now I just take a look and see I'm a little bit light here, I'm a little light here, a little light there, and a little light there. So. 
I just take the remaining seeds and go over the areas that are light. Another reason I like these trays is this lip is a little bit higher. The planting surface is down along this lower lip. There's a little bit of edge so that it catches actually some seeds and not so many fall off. The previous trays were pretty much planted flush and flat and the seeds sort of rolled off the tray. So if you're using a tray at home, just lower it a little bit. You don't want it too low, but you know, a quarter of an inch, eighth of an inch is good. Just helps catch the seeds a little bit. It also will help you when you harvest not to get soil um, as, you're, as, as you're harvesting the microgreens. So again, we just take the rest of the seeds and just continually find the areas where there are less seeds and, spray, and sprinkle them out. Sometimes when you get to the end, you just have to take the top of the bottle off and dump the rest out. Set your shaker jar to the side. And now you just take your finger and spread the seeds where they're really dense and touching a lot to areas where there are no seeds. Just don't go crazy. You want them as evenly as you can get them, but you know, don't drive yourself nuts trying to get them perfect. The seeds are gonna grow. I think that's good. There is my tray. I'll show you a little close up here so you can see my seeding density. So here's a close up of my tray. You can see the seeding density. It's pretty even. Yes, there's places where the seeds are touching, but that's okay. They'll spread out just as long as they're not all clumped on one half of the tray or quarter of the tray. It's all good. So there is my planted microgreen tray. On to the next step. Okay, now that we've sowed our seeds, it's time to wet them. We want to wet them. It does two things. One, it coats the soil surface. I'm sorry, it coat, well, it does coat the soil surface, but it also coats the seed surface with water lets the seeds to start to germinate and it will set the seeds into the soil a bit more. And here's another, th another step that when you first water your seeds like this, just go really slow because these spray bottle jets can have a tendency to again to blow the seeds out. Once they've been wetted, they seem to stay. Here's a seed right here. If you can see it, that's on the side. Sometimes I just use the spray bottle and Spray it towards the middle. So now that the seeds have been wet, there's less chance of them blowing off and you can really give them a good dose of water. Here again, you want to go around the container two or three times and you'll see the water pond up on the surface just for a minute before it soaks in. But you can soak them pretty well. The only seeds you might want to be a little bit careful of are basil. You don't, they don't need as much water, but the rest of them, you can soak them pretty good. That's wet enough. Now we're all set to take these seeds and set them into a place where we're going to grow them. Whether that's in a windowsill, on your kitchen counter that has some light, or on a growing rack, or under some other LED fixture. So that's going to be our next step. Okay, now it's time to put our seeds a way to let them germinate. And to do this, it's a multi-step purpose. First thing we want to do is take our watering tray and just place the planting tray inside of it. The purpose for that is just so any soil or moisture doesn't get to wherever you don't want it, so it doesn't run through the holes by chance. So now that that's done, we want to take our top and we don't put the top on like you normally would food, so it's domed up. I have an article written about that. It doesn't work well. What we need to do is press those seeds down into the soil, keep them covered, and pretend like we've covered them up with soil. We don't use soil on top. Some people will put vermiculite across the top of the seeds. 
I don't recommend it. We're going to use this lid and some weight and a towel to cover these up. The reason is if we put any dirt or any soil on top of these seeds, as the plants grow, it's going to loosen the surface. They won't root as well. And the soil will get on the plants and make them dirty when we want to harvest them. Another reason, and I'll get to this when we put the weight on, is we want to force these roots to grow down. We don't want the plants to be loose and wiggly in the soil surface. We want them to grow down. So instead of putting the top on like you normally would a food container, we're going to flip it over. Take the flat side and place it right in the center of our seeds. That's step one of this. The second step is we want to make sure that we hold this down. So we're going to place this tray under whatever grow lights or windowsill or kitchen counter that we want. And we're going to get a weight to put on top of it. How much weight? Well, quite a bit. I'm a geologist, so I use a lot of rocks. So I actually have this nice piece of coral right here. It's a piece of limestone. And I'm just going to place this right on top. It seems like a lot of weight, but really it's not. I've even put five pound weights on containers like this. Again, we want to keep them in a dark surface like the soil. Now this isn't completely dark. So what I've done to get around that is I just take a tea towel. And I just take a tea towel and place the tea towel over the top. Now those seeds are completely or almost completely dark. Now you can do it two ways. You can put the top on or the tea towel on and then put the weight on top. That helps hold the tea towel on. The problem is that when you go to take the tea towel off, it generally has an opportunity to disrupt the top on top of the plants. So I like to put the weight on straight down on top of it and then place the tea towel over the top. Now, if you're planting more than one tray, you don't need all those weights. So instead, I have another tray here. It's some cilantro that's actually starting to grow. If we have two trays, you just place the top on the bottom tray like you normally would. Take your other tray, put it on top, and then place your weight on top of both of those. And then put your tea towel over the top. You can stack them up three. If you want, you can push it and go four high. I would just stay at three high. The reason being that when these plants grow, they will actually lift this rock and lid right off. Those plants are that strong that they'll do that. So I think three is good. If you get them too tall, they'll get leaning and then they can fall over. So that's that step right there. So again, place your lid on top of your, place your lid on top of your seeds. Flat side down, put a weight on top of those seeds. And then cover up the trays with a tea towel. On to the next step. Okay, so our microgreens are planted. They're in a blackout period. What I didn't add is that you can use these heat mats if your house is cold, especially during the winter. They are just a Viso Sun heat mat, it's 10 by 20. It just plugs in, doesn't use that much energy, keeps the um, temperature about five or 10 degrees warmer than the air temperature. It really helps germination if it's cold. Um, you don't need to keep the plants on it all the time just when they're germinating. I generally use them between October and May. I live in central New York. Um, once in a while, I'll still even use them up into, into June if I need to, just to keep the uh, soil a little bit warmer and get the plants to germinate faster, but I don't use them while the plants grow. So let's take a look at these microgreens. We've waited 48 hours and in fact there's a little bit of surprise underneath here. This one we actually waited um, 72 hours before we remove it. So I'll take off the blackout period, I'll take off the weight, and voila! Our broccoli has turned red. I don't know if you can see that. Our broccoli has turned red. Eh, I just transferred this out for a bull's blood beet. I just had these growing. So these beets just came out of a 40 or 72 hour blackout period. You can see they're pretty stringy. They're a little bit pink, but 
Once they hit light, they're going to straighten right up. But the first thing we need to do is give them some water. So this is in the home microgreens tray. I do have a watering tray underneath. If I can get them apart here. So here's the watering tray. There's no holes in it. And what you really need to do is to lift this tray. This tray is dry. You want to remember this weight because that's how we're going to water. We're going to bottom water. We're not putting any water at all on top of these microgreens. That's going to put dirt up onto the microgreens. It's going to increase the chance for bacterial and fungal disease. So what we're going to do is put water in this tray, put this tray on top of the water and let the water go up from the bottom. But what you want to do is think about the weight. So just remember the weight of this dry tray. When it gets to that weight again, that's when we want to add more water. And if it's heavier, we don't need to add water. It's as simple as that. That's just a weight that you need to remember in your head. So how do we water? Well, we take the watering tray and I just put water. I have, uh, I'm on city water, so I let it sit a couple days um, in a jug and let the chlorine go off of it. So all we do is just take the watering tray and we pour about, I don't know, quarter of an inch of water into the tray. Then we just take the microgreen tray, right? The one with the holes in the bottom. And we just set it right down on top. And eventually the water will soak up from the bottom into the soil. You can leave it just like that. We haven't overwatered them. This Cocoa Core, this professional potty mix, um, will take a lot of water. And sometimes if, we, if you're using, like I planted earlier, broccoli or a plant that's ready in 10 days, sometimes you only need to water them once. But again, you want to remember that weight. Now there are other alternatives, and I'm going to show you some right now. This is where, how I keep microgreens right here. Here's my home microgreen setup. I use three 10 by 20 trays and a three foot wide utility shelf. And I have one of those Home Depot uh, $15 lights over the top of it. It seems to do a good job. Uh, just one light for a whole tray. You can see I can keep nine home microgreen trays of microgreens growing at once. Um, those are the planting trays and I just water into the 10 by 20 trays. This setup works great. Um, if I don't have so many growing, I can actually take these 10 by 20 trays, tip them the other way or just put one per shelf so that the microgreens are completely under the light. What I generally do is take these nine trays and I sort of rotate them so they're all directly under the light each day and just keep rotating them around. Um, again, I have one, two, three, four. I could use even up, up to five shelves with just uh, one of those plastic utility shelving units. I could grow a lot of microgreens in a little bit of space. If you're going to plant more than one microgreen and you don't want to use this tray and you want to use something else, I generally, this is how I do it. I use a regular 10 by 20 planting tray and I take my microgreens and I set them in there just like you saw in that video. And then all I do is just water. I just pour water into this tray. Nice thing about these trays, you can see there's ridges and holes, ridges and grooves in them. So it lets water absorb into them and once it's once it's done, the water can run back out of the trays to the certain level. You can't just float them and soak them. Um, you don't want to keep them sitting in water all the time. So if you do have extra water after two or three hours, you're going to want to take your microgreens out of that, dump the water out of the tray or put the microgreens into another tray and get rid of that water. So those are your watering methods. I, this is called bottom watering. It's definitely the best way to water. It keeps the microgreens dry. We won't have to worry about as many fungal diseases or any other diseases. We won't have to worry about um, getting dirt up on the microgreens as we water. We don't have to worry about spraying water all over the place. We just take water, pour it into our watering tray, set our planting tray into the watering tray, and we're done. Microgreens that like broccoli, um, kohlrabi, uh, a lot of the brassicas, all you have to do is generally water them once. Once they're done, with the blackout period, water them, and that's all generally, they're all ready for harvest. So that's how we water our microgreens.
wasn't that easy. In seven days from you getting your home microgreens kit, you can grow a tray of broccoli like this that's ready to harvest. Seven days, that's all it takes. Simple, easy. This can even grow longer. What I like about the home microgreens kit is you go to the farmer's market, you buy microgreens, they're already losing nutrition. You have to put them in the refrigerator. Home microgreens kit, you just take a pair of scissors and go right across the top of here, trim them down. You cut and harvest as much as you need. If you don't need the whole tray, you put it back underneath the light and let it keep growing. They're gonna be fresh every day. That's the advantage of growing home microgreens in your house. This is the broccoli. These are the exact same. These are not the same seeds that you saw me plant, but this is a tray I planted uh, six days ago. This could go one more day before you harvest it. They grow amazingly fast, but they'll last up to 12 or 13 days. So you could harvest microgreens for four or five days off this if you didn't want to use them all. Red cabbage. Beautiful red purple stems, great flavor. You can grow three, four, five, six of these trays, trim a little bit off and have a whole microgreen salad. Again, for several days. That's the advantage of the whole microgreens. You don't have to use the whole thing. You don't have to store them in the refrigerator where they're losing nutrition. They're growing every day so that you can harvest them fresh. That's the advantage of home microgreens. It's simple. You can go to homemicrogreens.com forward slash store and take a look at the kits, take a look at the seeds, take a look at the supplies I have. If you want more information on microgreens, I'm continually updating my website. I'm adding a new article almost once a week. And I'm going to go through all the different varieties, how to grow them, the little tips that you need for each variety. Each one's a little bit different. It's really easy to figure out. You won't have any problem with growing any of these microgreens. So there you have it. I hope you think that's easy. I know I was amazed at how easy it is. You just need a little confidence, a little bit of support, and you too can grow fresh microgreens for your salads, for your burgers, for your tacos, for your pizzas, anything you want. Anything you can use regular lettuce or a regular broccoli plant, this is more nutritious than full-grown broccoli. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope to see you around. Thank you.